In this lecture, we're going to talk about the very important concept of pseudorandomness. This is going to serve as an important building block for computationally secret encryption schemes, and it's actually an important concept that comes up very frequently in cryptography. Let's first step back for a moment and ask ourselves, what does random mean? Or more precisely, what do we mean by uniform? And actually, I'm going to use the, term, the terms random and uniform interchangeably, but when I want to be precise, when I want to be careful, I'll, re I'll only use the term uniform when I mean the uniform distribution. Well, we can ask ourselves the following question. If I give you three bit strings, which of these three bit strings is a uniform string? Well, the first one has a pattern, 0, 1, 0, 1, 0, 1, etc. The third one also has an even more obvious pattern. It's just a string of all zeros. So the second one might look to you as if that's the only one of the three that should qualify as being uniform. But in fact, if you generated a string uniformly at random, then each of the three strings shown here occurs with probability exactly 2 to the minus 16. That is, each of these strings occurs with the same exact probability if we generate a 16-bit string uniformly at random. So we really can't say that any one of these strings is random and another one isn't, and in some sense they're all equally random. What we see from this example is that randomness is not a property of a string, but rather it's a property of a distribution over strings. What I mean by that is that no particular string, in the previous case no particular 16-bit string, can be said to be any more random or any more uniform than any other 16-bit string, but what we can talk about is the uniformity of a distribution on strings, a distribution that results in or generates a 16-bit string. Just to be a little bit more careful here, a distribution on n-bit strings is simply a function called d here that assigns to each possible string of length n a probability in the range of 0 to 1. You can view this as defining a random variable which takes on values that are n-bit strings. Uh, and furthermore, we of course require the condition that the sum over all these probabilities is equal to 1. So we specify a distribution on n-bit strings by specifying for, all, for each possible n-bit string what the probability is with which that string is sampled. So a uniform distribution on n-bit strings is simply the distribution that I'll denote by u sub n which assigns equal probability 2 to the minus n to every n-bit string. That is, the distribution in which un of x, the probability with which the string x occurs, is 2 to the minus n for every string x of length n. Given this preceding discussion, what should we say that pseudorandom means? Well, intuitively, what we're trying to capture is the idea that a particular string is pseudorandom if it can't be distinguished from a uniform or a random string. But as we saw before, if we try to ask ourselves which of some set of strings or which of these three strings is pseudorandom, it doesn't really make sense. The question uh, doesn't make sense the same way it didn't make sense before. And again, what we see here is that pseudorandomness is not going to be defined as a property of any particular string but rather pseudorandomness is a property of a distribution on strings. So we can't really speak of a pseudorandom string, but what we can talk about is a pseudorandom distribution on strings. Our first definition, uh, or our first candidate definition of pseudorandomness might be something like the, follow like the following. And this is actually what people did historically when they were looking at the uh, case of pseudorandomness back in the 1950s. Let's fix some distribution d on n-bit strings. So we just defined what a distribution is a moment ago, and we'll just fix any such distribution. By way of notation, I'll write uh, x left arrow d to refer to sampling the string x according to distribution d. That is, picking a string according to distribution d and assigning that string to the variable x. Again, historically speaking, d was considered to be a pseudorandom distribution if it passed a bunch of statistical tests. So what do I mean by that? Well, what I mean by that is, if we look at, for example, the probability 
with which the first bit of x is 1, when we sample x according to distribution d, then that probability should approximate the probability with which the first bit of x would be 1 if x were chosen from the uniform distribution. If x were chosen from the uniform distribution, the probability that its first bit would be equal to 1 would be exactly 1 half. So we require that when we sample x according to distribution d, the first bit of x should be 1 with probability roughly 1 half. Similarly, if we look at the probability with which the parity of the bits of x, that is, the xor of all the bits in x, is 1, well, if d is a pseudorandom distribution, then that probability should approximate the probability with which the parity of x is 1 when x is sampled from the uniform distribution. That probability is exactly 1 half. So therefore, if d is pseudorandom, the probability with which the parity of x is 1 when x is sampled from d should also be close to 1 half. And more generally, we can fix some set of statistical tests, that is, any kind of predicate we define on a string x. And we can look at or we can compare the probability with which ai of x is equal to 1 when x is sampled from distribution d and the probability that ai of x is equal to 1 when x is sampled from the uniform distribution. And those should be close. And if we require that to hold, if we require closeness to, to hold for, say, 20 different statistical tests, a1 through a20, then that can serve as our definition of what it means for d to be pseudorandom. That is, d is pseudorandom if these probabilities are equal for i equals 1 to 20, or are close, rather, for i equals 1 to 20. You should immediately see, though, that this kind of a definition, while it may be sufficient for some applications, is not going to be sufficient in cryptography, where we have an adversary who is specifically trying to distinguish your string sampled from your distribution from string sampled from the uniform distribution. That is, the definition on the previous slide is not going to suffice in an adversarial setting. And the reason for this is because we don't know what statistical test an attacker will come up with. Right? We had defined on the previous slide that a distribution was pseudorandom if it passed some set uh, a1 through a20 of statistical tests. But an attacker might come along with its own test not in that set, and if that test distinguishes the output, uh, the, a string x chosen from the uniform distribution from a string x sampled from your distribution d, then d shouldn't count as a pseudorandom distribution. So the cryptographic definition of pseudorandomness, the modern definition, is that a distribution d is pseudorandom if it passes every efficient statistical test. Now, if we had left out the word efficient and required it to be pseudorandom uh, only if it passes every single statistical test, it turns out that that's equivalent to requiring that d be uniform. And therefore, uniform and pseudorandom would end up with the same meaning and we wouldn't get anywhere. But as we've talked about, we're interested uh, in a computational relaxation, and it's reasonable to restrict our attention to only efficient attackers who can only perform efficient statistical tests. And so it'll suffice for our purposes if we define d in this way. Concretely, if we try to formalize the definition on the previous slide using a concrete notion of security, we would get a definition like the following. So fix some distribution d on n-bit strings. Then we can say that the distribution d is t epsilon pseudorandom if for all attackers A running in, some, running in time at most t, the probability with which A of x equals 1 when x is sampled according to d, and the probability with which A of x is equal to 1 when x is sampled from the uniform distribution, those two probabilities are at most epsilon apart. So the difference between those probabilities, or the absolute value of that difference, is at most epsilon. This exactly corresponds to the intuitive notion we had on the previous slide. If we view the attacker A as being equivalent to some kind of statistical test on strings x sampled from the distribution, then we're requiring that no statistical test that runs in time at most t can distinguish between a string sampled from the uniform distribution and a string sampled from distribution d with probability any better than epsilon. The asymptotic definition of pseudorandomness, which is the one we're going to be using from now on in the course, is a bit more complicated because, again, we need to take into account this idea of having a security parameter.
So as before, we'll denote that security parameter by n. And here, the security parameter will correspond exactly to, uh, will define for us some length of strings that we're considering. So in addition to the security parameter n, we'll have some polynomial p. And we'll let d sub n be some distribution over strings of length p of n. So that means that for every value of the security parameter n, we're looking at distributions over, string of length, over strings of length p of n. You can think, if you like, for now, uh, of p of n being equal to n, but it will be more interesting later on if we let p of n be larger than n. So you can think of p of n being n squared for concreteness. Now, in the asymptotic setting, pseudorandomness will be a property of a sequence of distributions. So rather than looking at any particular distribution, di, and looking at the probability with which some test can distinguish it, what we're going to be interested in is the asymptotic probability with which any efficient attacker can distinguish d of n from a uniform distribution over strings of length p of n. And again, we're going to be interested in the asymptotic performance here, the asymptotic behavior of an algorithm or, or of any algorithm trying to distinguish, or equivalently, the asymptotic pseudorandomness of the distributions dn. So I'm going to let this uh, set dn correspond to the set d1, d2, d3, etc., uh, so on up to infinity. So we have now a sequence of distributions defined uh, or called dn. And we'll say that this sequence of distributions is pseudorandom if for every probabilistic polynomial time algorithm A, there's some negligible function epsilon, such that if we look at the difference between the probability that A of x equals 1 when x is sampled from distribution dn and the probability that A of x outputs 1 when x is sampled from the uniform distribution, the difference, or the absolute value of the difference, will be at most epsilon n. Okay? Let's break this down a little bit further. So on the left-hand side of this inequality, we have a term, a difference, uh, or an absolute value of a difference between two values, which is a function of n. Fixing some algorithm a, for every value of the security parameter n, we can explicitly compute or evaluate the probability with which a of x equals 1 when x is sampled from d of n, and the probability that a of x equals 1 when x is sampled from the uniform distribution over strings of length p of n. Note that the input to a in both cases is of the same length, because in one case we're sampling from the distribution d of n, which is a distribution over strings of length p of n, and in the other case we're sampling from the uniform distribution over strings of length p of n. So for every value of the security parameter n, we can compute the two probabilities, take their difference, take the absolute value, and we get a number. So what's on the left-hand side is something which is a function of n. For every value of n, we get a real number. And what we're asking, or what we're requiring, is that that function be negligible, meaning that asymptotically it will decay to zero faster than any inverse polynomial function. So again, the sequence d of n is pseudorandom if for every efficient algorithm a, there's some negligible function which may depend on a, but which will still be guaranteed to be negligible, such that the probability with which a outputs 1 when given a string sampled according to d of n, and the probability with which a outputs 1 when given something sampled according to the uniform distribution, is at most epsilon of n, is at most that negligible function. In the next lecture, we'll talk about pseudorandom generators, which are deterministic functions that allow us to sample from a pseudorandom distribution.